you do realize that even with your parents, even with your parents, you must believe that they are your parents. Hear me and understand me. You understand me, understand me. Understand me. Even with your parents, you must believe that they are your parents. For you don't know that they are your parents. You must believe by way of the fact that they have told you that they are your parents. That you have been raised and brought up as their child and them as your parents, your mother and your father. And this occurrence, this fact, this truth, will hold the same for a God presenting himself, herself, itself, God, themselves to you, that you must believe that they are such. For how could they truly prove it to you? Your parents can prove it by way of a blood test, which even in a blood test, And I don't know how the percentages work for mothers, as if, if it's a difference for mothers, but when I've seen when there have been paternity tests and the father, the man, the male has gone to seek the legitimacy of a child being his, it always comes back that it is 98 point something percent chance that it is. It's never 100. Could it not be 100 because of the fact we come from two different bloodlines? So even so then, you still have to believe that they are your parents. So, faced with a God that I tell you is God, how would a God prove to you that it is God? Even with the most powerful of powers and ability, You still must believe because no matter what they did, you still have to believe, well, they are doing it and there is no other that could do it. They could do it 100% with infallibility, with no doubt, no crack, that there could be no other God. And really, I'm saying I'll just get to the point that one of the flaws, if you will, one of the drawbacks with the, these currently accepted gods or the currently accepted religions or the major religions is that none of them have presented themselves. And yet, we are known for some, it is held that if you don't believe in our God, that you will suffer and be punished for the fact that you refuse to believe in our God. And so one would ask, well, God, why don't you present yourself outside of some words that were given second hand by someone that is supposedly come from you, an intermediary. But even if God presented itself, it must prove itself. And even improving itself, it is still, one is still faced with deeming that God worthy to be worshipped. Deeming, determining the worthiness of being worshipped and praised. For it could force you, 
could compel you by way of torture, by way of pain and suffering, saying that you will serve me, such as a slave must serve a master. If you do not, I will punish you, I will beat you, I will demean you, I will hurt you, I will even kill you. So if a God cannot present himself to be worthy of it, then what is the purpose even in validating that the God is a God? Because it is an unrighteous God. And then we're still faced with coming through the point of ignorance to accept the gods and what these gods have done or allowed to do. Within that cloud of ignorance of not knowing that God is God and exists and is real. One saying that one God has presented itself in better form and fashion of another is still only by way of referring to some other source than God, some human source. It's infallible source, and then maintaining that it is infallible by way of saying that it comes from God, but once again, it comes through another for it. It comes through a fallible source. How does God prove himself to be God? And beyond that, what deems a God worthy? to be praised and followed, worshipped, believed in, to have faith in as God. What has done so more than truth and truth itself? One must believe in truth. One must believe in in the concept and the aspect of truth. One must believe in the meaning of truth. And then one must determine the value of truth, the righteousness of truth. One must compare and contrast truth amongst all other things, all other said beings, entities, ideas, concepts, powers, spirits, concepts. All there is a demon, is it worthy? And just the very concept does it not prove its worth. Just the very idea and concept of truth. The principle of truth, the spirit of truth, of being guided by truth and saying, well, once again, there is a subject of truth. That is my opinion, but outside of my opinion, we know something. I can deem someone bad, but what is the truth? Why are they bad? What is the qualification of someone being deemed bad? What are the acts that they've done? What is the intent of their acts? What is their mindset? There's still something to be seen, shown, and judged. And those things are done in truth. The truth of what is done, one person has done compared to what another person has done. The truth in action and in deed and thought. And in word, and the truth of them as an object, as a being, a being with, within existence and being itself in this world, within this, within this dimension, the subject, the objective, and the non-objective. Then it is the truth of what they are not. What a person is missing, what a person doesn't have. What they don't have in thought. What they don't have intelligence, what they don't have in physical being. 
but they don't have any power, but they don't have an ability that which they lack, don't have. And even that is spoken of by way of truth. Truth is, I don't have six fingers. I have what we hold to be five. And if I did have six fingers, that means everyone has six fingers. I would be the steady, the adopted word for this number of digits. But you get what I'm saying? But it's only by way of truth. It is all so worthy. And the old show so shows itself. And even in that small percentile that you don't know of truth. You don't know the truth. You don't know that the truth exists. You can't believe in it 100%.